former Navy SEAL Carl Higby, who fought in Ramadi and is now watching it all unravel. And oh, this has got to be gut wrenching for it's you. It's disgusting. I mean, you look at these bureaucrats in Washington, they're fighting this war like they'd run a reelection campaign. You have to send soldiers in there and listen to what soldiers say you know, if we're going to win this war. All right, when you say soldiers, obviously Americans hear boots on the ground, they think Vietnam, they think quagmire, they think getting bogged down. What do you say? I've been calling for boots on the ground since day one. You can't effectively execute airstrikes without uh, proper intel on the ground from ground troops. Now, we can bomb all we want over there, and if we don't, uh, if we don't get guys over there gathering the intelligence in order to, uh, to find these targets, it's going to be useless. Carl, you've heard this question asked of all these candidates. Right. Do you think it was worth it? Yes. Um, if I could make the same decision again, even knowing what I know now, yes. Because look at every time we don't do something. I said in my book that uh, if we don't keep a residual force there, there's going to be a power vacuum, and then we're going to be forced to go back in there in under a decade. We're here in three years now. So I think uh, absolutely you're going to have to commit a lot of resources to take it back and sustain a large force over time there. And uh, that's just the way this part of the world works. So when you hear the likes of Rand Paul and others, you know, question what we did and whether it was worth it, uh, versus someone like a Marco Rubio says the world is better off with Saddam Hussein, whatever has come afterwards, what do you think? Rand Paul is wrong. Um, the, uh, we, we need to be there, and if we don't be there, there will be a power vacuum, and we'll see another murderous dictator rise up. I know we put Saddam in power, but these people only speak dictator, so if we're not there to somehow perpetuate some type of democracy, it's just going to fall back into a dictator hands and be a cesspool of terrorism. Um, what do your buddies say who were there with you in Ramadi and remember well how the they're, blood and the sacrifice? They're mad. I mean, we're all mad. I mean, we put a lot of millions and millions of dollars, thousands of lives into holding this country as uh, Ramadi is a huge stake in that because it's on a main supply line, major city. The amount of resources we have dumped into it also is, is unparalleled. And unfortunately, now the, uh, the ISIS fighters still have that. Um, why do they have that momentum? And they were doing a little bit of picture gloating today. I'm not afraid to show their faces, you know, and, and just rub it into our faces. Well, I think this emboldens them. And, and like, we, we killed the guy in Syria. I mean, we can't continue to trade one bad guy that our special forces go in and kill for one city turning over to ISIS. Um, right now, it's just that they are so emboldened by the fact that they've been able to do this as far as they were. And Baghdad will be next. And when Baghdad falls, it's going to set the precedent because... You say when, not even if. When, when, very soon, I think, because Ramadi is a staging point for that. And if Baghdad falls, that's going to be very hard for us to take the country back you know Carl we you guys you know trained a lot of these guys these Iraqi yeah. soldiers and I take nothing against them and maybe they just weren't up to the fight or up to the challenge or trained enough but boy they ran fast yeah. and and I'm, I'm beginning to wonder and I'm not making an indictment of all the Iraqi soldiers whether they're up to the task of defending Baghdad of defending greater Iraq and whether this is going to be like a fall of Saigon thing all yeah. over. Well, look, Neil, we went in there and we trained these guys for a decade. And if they couldn't turn around and defend their country after a decade of training, they're not going to be able to do it after another decade. So of why training. should we? So the, the fact is we just need to commit long-term occupancy to that. It's, it's an unfortunate truth. And if, if we want this place to be stable in any way, shape, or form, it's going to but require it, You know, you're a young guy. I'm slightly older guy. But it's never been stable. It's always been accessible. It, it, it is. It's the cradle of civilization. They're still living in mud huts. I mean, it's not a it's not a. So I guess what I'm going to ask you cynically, and you're the hero, you're yeah. the warrior, a genuine one, uh, and I read a prompter, so forgive me <laughs> for sounding disrespectful, but do you think that people look at this and say, good times, bad times, Republican presidents, Democratic presidents, uh, whatever the cause, we just get knee deep in a mess? It is a mess. And unfortunately, the only way to get out of this mess is to kill a lot of bad guys. And that's not going to look pretty on some politician's resume, but that is the only way to defeat any type of terrorism. But why not leave it to the Saudis and these guys who always blame us for not being there when it's their neighborhood? They won't do it. And what will really? happen is it'll just become a larger and larger and larger problem, and then it'll be facing us on our own shores. Are you troubled then by this division among Republican candidates who seem to be tripping over themselves to absolve themselves a responsibility for a mess they claim was the other president's time. Look, they can, you can sit here and armchair quarterback all you want. I think President Bush did the right thing with the right information at the right time, and I would go back in and do it again, and I think he would too. And do you think that the candidate who said that wouldn't suffer for saying that, or he would? <sighs> I, you know, it, there's, a, there's a growing division in this country on both sides for uh, two parts of Republican, two parts Democrat of what should we do? Should we fight this war? Should we let the locals fight it? And I think the fact is we're just going to come down to a major point in the election here. And uh, you're going to have people who don't want to fight this war be faced with uh, serious consequences if we don't continue to uh, put resources towards it. Real quickly, uh, Donald Trump, what yes, people said at the beginning, we should have taken the oil, held the oil, 
told him a lesson. No one's going to help us with this, but that would have stopped the money and the spigot of cash that ISIS is enjoying now. What do you think? There's a reason Donald Trump has been successful as he has in business, because he is cut and dry, to the point, no BS. And I think that uh, that would have been a, a large part in our favor if he had uh, he had been in charge when that decision had to come down. Wow. Carl, very good seeing you again. Thank you, sir. Continued success.